In this video, I will present the most important new features in Archiframe 2019. A list of all new features is available in our newsletter, which you can find through the link in this video's description. The most important new features in Archiframe are, firstly, that Archiframe has improved documentation tools. This includes more control over pens, the possibility to show window frame lines, improved dimensions, and a zero-depth section drawing. Secondly, Archiframe's online help and CNC writers have also been updated. Thirdly, Archiframe elements provide many new possibilities, including adding noggings, creating staggered wall studs, and overriding the stud spacing of a wall element. Before we start, make sure that your data folder is defined correctly. This is because some of the improved features are stored in the XML files inside your data folders and won't appear if the folder's definitions are missing. Especially if you're working with a PLA file made with an older version of Archiframe, make sure that the newest Archiframe library is imported into your project. Now let's start with adding colors to the layers of an element. These colors will be visible in both ARCHICAD and ARCHIFRAME sections of the element. The first thing to do is to check what pen set your current view is using. This can be done in the view settings. Then you can check what codes different colors in that pen set have through options, element attributes, and pens. Write down the numbers of the colors you want to use in your element. Let's also have a look at the fills available in this project. You can find a list of all fills in Options, Element Attributes, and Fills. For my sections, I'm going to use the fills 25% and Wood. I've created a new element type with colors defined for each of the layers. My element is called 42 by 173 colored wall, and it is very simple, consisting only of three layers that are red, blue, and green. The color of each layer is defined in the layer settings in the cut fill pen and cut line pen fields. I've set the color to 20, which is red in my pen set, for both of these fields. In addition, I've defined a cut fill type of 25% for this layer. The cut fill can be foreground, 50%, or any other fill name available in your project. Note that you must be precise with the spelling of the fill name. For example, when using Archicad's default semi-transparent fills, there is a space before the percentage symbol. If you spell the name of the fill wrong, it will not appear in your drawing. For the other layers in my element, I followed the same procedure except using different colors. In the middle layer, I've used the fill type Wood. Now let's create planks for this element. Then I'll draw an ARCHICAD section across one of the planks. As you can see, I now have a green, blue, and red layer in my wall. The blue layer also has a wooden pattern, just like I wanted. A similar section can also be made with Archiframe section feature, which makes it easier to integrate the section with your other Archiframe drawings. It is now possible to make a zero depth section with Archiframe section tool. To do so, I'll navigate to the element drawing and select a part of the element. Then, in the element projections window, I'll select one of the zero depth section types and click add section. Then I'll simply draw a section line and click on the side that I want the section to face. And finally, I'll place the section near the left edge of the drawing. Again, you can see the pen settings in the zero depth section. But what if we wanted to change one of the settings? For example, changing the wood fill to a 25% blue fill. In that case, I would change that setting in the layer settings. Now the change would apply to any new planks that I create, but not to the planks that have already been created. Therefore, to change the fill of this pre-existing section, I would need to recreate its planks. 
In these elevation drawings, we can also have a look at two other new Archiframe documentation features. The first is that in the top projection, Archiframe now automatically creates dimensions for layer offsets. To make these dimensions clearer, I might have to move some of the other texts out of the way. The second documentation update is the possibility to add window frame lines in the elevations. These are necessary if the hole in the wall is slightly bigger than the window, in other words, if your window frames have some oversize. The window frame line can be added from the custom element settings. Note that your window oversize can be set from two places. The first is in the ARCHICAD window object settings. Secondly, it is possible to override the object settings through the More Settings button of the ARCHIFRAME Elements dialog. Therefore, if your window frame lines are not appearing correctly, make sure that the oversizes are defined correctly for the window object and that there are no overrides. Next, I'll show you the improved online help, which can be accessed by Alt-Shift-F1 or Option-Shift-FN-F1 for Mac. The help is now web-based and no longer dependent on Adobe Acrobat. You can find the contents of the help on the left. The web interface also contains a search bar that you can use to find information on specific topics such as rafters. Then let's look at the new staggered wall type that Archiframe enables. I've created a new interior wall element type called Gypsum Wall 42 by 98 Staggered. This element contains five layers. On each side, the wall has two gypsum board layers that are created with the default settings. The staggering is defined in the stud layer. I've set the 42 by 98 millimeter planks as the stud material. The staggering is defined in the Z stagger field, where I've set the value 1. In order to make the staggering effect possible, the frame must be wider than the studs. I've therefore defined the top and bottom plate and sides material as 42 by 173 millimeters. I've also set the stud spacing to 300 millimeters. Now let's create the planks to see the result of the stagger effect. Next, let's look at another new wall element feature, the possibility to change stud spacing after the element has been created. This might be useful when one of your interior walls needs to bear a larger load than the others, and therefore needs smaller stud spacing. Instead of having to create a new element type for the wall, you can simply edit one instance of that element through the Element Settings dialog. At the bottom of the Element Settings window, click the Settings button under Element Settings. I'll set the spacing to 200 in this case. The final new wall element feature is the Noggings option, which adds horizontal bracing to your walls. Noggings can be added in the Element Settings window. In order to make the Noggings easier to build in practice, it is also possible to stagger the Noggings. This makes it possible to nail the Noggings to the frame from the plank end. Finally, let's look at Archiframe's new CNC settings. Archiframe now supports the Swedish RAND cut saw. In addition, the old CNC riders have new features, as shown in these screenshots. These new settings increase the flexibility over the CNC false content fields. There are also settings related to reinforcement, saw cuts, nailings, markings, and other features. 
Now let's go through the steps of creating a WUP file of a wall in which the cladding is nailed to the battens and the windboard is nailed to the wall framing. I'll use the wall from the demo house as an example. It is important to start with the outer layer, so we'll do the nailings on the cladding first. I'll start by selecting all the cladding and the battens and open them in 3D. Then I'll explode the cladding through the Element Board Tools dialog. This makes it possible to select individual panels. Then I'll select everything and open the Nailings window from the Element Board Tools dialog. I've saved the preset nailing setting for cladding. In this case, nails should be added every one meter for a cladding panel and a batten that intersect. Here's the result in 3D. Now let's update the element and repeat this procedure for the windboard and the framing. I'll again select the relevant pieces and show them in 3D. This time, I'll use a nailing preset for boards. Again, here's the result. Before creating the WUP file, I'll update the element. Then I'll select the entire element in the top projection and in the CNC menu, I'll select the WP Rider option setting and click the CNC button. These settings look pretty good to me. And this is what the WUP file looks like. All the layers of the wall are visible. The nailings are visible in the file also, and it is possible to select individual panels. The wall can also be examined from different perspectives, and the different layers of the element can be exploded and unexploded. All the information is also stored as a code at the left.